Hiya, it's Hannah the Artisan Duck and I have a really cute ghost brick stitch tutorial to show you today. I did pumpkins last Halloween so this year I figured we'd do ghosts. Uh, you could easily peyote this if you wanted to by sort of starting at the top. If you know peyote you could just peyote it this way. Um, but I have so many brick stitch tutorials on my channel already that I figured I would just go ahead and do another one to other ghosts. Keep it consistent but I might do some peyote in the future, so don't harm me to that. I'm using just a few different beads. I've got size 11 seed beads, and I'm using a white, a black, and then I'm using a clear at the top. And the reason I've switched to the clear for the loop at the top is just because when I put this in white at the top, it made him look like he had a really funny head, and it just was odd, so that's why I've done that. I am also going to brick stitch sideways today because, you know, this is me being really picky, the beads, the black beads I've got, are sort of squashed, they're not a perfect round, if you see what I mean, so they look more of a, a mouth, like an open mouth when you turn them that way, so if you stitch them sideways and then turn them up, it looks like more of an open mouth, I don't know if that makes sense, it does in my brain, anyway, we'll get started. So, right, so I've got my beading thread on my needle here, and you probably need about one and a half arm lengths for this. Um, I'm hoping mine is long enough. It's a bit shorter than that. Um, this is what I had left on the roll of my uh, beading thread, so I'm hoping this is sufficient. Right, I've got my seed beads off to the side. I'm going to try and avoid bringing them onto the camera until I'm using them because my camera tries to focus on those and not what I'm doing. So, to start with, we're just going to pick up two of the seed beads and we're going to pull it I'll pull them down the thread. Now we need quite a good tail thread on this, probably about nine inches. I'm just going to double check that I am leaving enough um, because we're going to use the tail thread at the end to weave in um, and to make our loop. So I'm going to put it like that's roughly nine inches on that. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is, you can see, this, so this is the side of the thread with the needle on it. This is the tail thread in my hand. So the first bead here, we're just going to take the needle back up like that and then pull through. And this will make these beads just sit side by side like that. Now I'm just going to flip that round and then I'm going to pick up another seed bead. And because we're working sideways on our ghost, we need to pick up 10 seed beads to make one side. And there's just going to be in a straight line. So you can see now we've got three in a row. Now we need to move our thread so it's exiting out one of the side beads. So I'm just going to take my needle back down into this one here. Like so. Just pull that thread to tighten it a bit and pull down and now you can see I'm exiting out at the side so I can just pick up another one and then take it back down I know it's a bit hard to see I'm trying to hold the beads there's not much to hold on to for a minute so I'm going to take it back down so I'm exiting out the bottom and we're going back down the top there like that and it'll push it to the side and we're just going to carry on doing this until all 10 beads are added I will say as well this first row of beading always goes a little bit sort of wonky and and that's fine the, the minute you start adding more beads it um, evens itself out so because we're exiting out in the middle there we need to be on the end we just go straight back up like that and then we pick up another bead so we're exiting out the top and we're going to go in through the bottom up like that so I will fast forward some sections. Once I've sort of talked through what I'm going to do, I'll fast forward some, um, try and make it so you can see what I'm doing, but they, you know, you're not watching me do it in slow motion because that would be super boring. So I'm just going to keep on going like this and I shall come back to you when I've added all 10 of my seed beads. Right, there we go, there's my 10 beads. Like I say, I know it looks wonky, but that will sort itself out as we add more beads onto the ghost. So this is the side of the ghost. I'm gonna show you what I mean. So we've just worked down here. So the tail thread is exiting out here. 
sort of near the eyes um, and that's how it has to be because we're going to need to take that back in at the end to make the loop and we are down here exiting right at the bottom of the ghost so the next row is all white beads again and we are going we're decreasing the level here so we're not increasing the length we're going in a little bit but we are increasing the length at the top so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do both of those steps so because we're decreasing I'm just going to tighten that up because we're decreasing here we're just going to pick up one seed bead to begin with so there's my one bead and we're going to take the needle into this thread that's going between these two beads just like that and pull it through now to finish the stitch we're going to take the needle um, I might just turn it a minute so I can get an angle so yeah we're going to take the needle back up the bead and that's the very bottom of the bead and we're going to pull if it's come a bit loose at the side you know there's no harm in just going back and sort of tightening a few bits up that's fine and then when you pull it down it'll sit like that on the beads can you see it, it like I say it's all going to start pulling together in a minute but it sits on like that so the next bead is the same theory you pick up one you take it into the threads that are going between those two beads there you pop your needle through like that and then you take your needle up through from the bottom like that and we're going to continue all the way up here until we run out of those little bridging threads as I call them there those bridging threads there so we're going to go all the way up until we reach the very last one and then I'll just show you how to add that one onto the end to make that row longer There we go you can see I've added all of those I think it's nine in total yeah it's nine beads in total and now we need to add one more off the top but as you can see we've got none of the bridging threads there so we're going to pick up our seed bead and we're going to take the needle this way and it's really hard to show on camera especially with it being a white thread and white beads but there's a thread that's going up into this seed bead here and we're basically putting our needle can you see there right under that so just tighten that up a bit we're going to pull that through and then we are going to take the needle back up like that and that finishes that stitch off and now we have two rows of beading um, if it's not starting to sit right you can just sort of wiggle it around the beads will start to sit in the right positions as you can see this bead here wants to keep dropping and that's why I'm going to do a little turn with this thread you later to stop that one from falling so don't worry about that and just to say when we decrease here you will see the thread stepping up the outside so you know you'll see the threads there so if you're making these ghosts try not to use like a a black thread unless of course that's like a, a certain look you're going for but try to keep the thread color as neutral as you can so we're exiting out the top um, I'm going to show you we're here and we're moving on to this row now where the eye starts to come in and because we were moving when we do brick stitch we move this way through the beading we sort of weave our way through that way we're going to start at the top now as you can see the beading is sort of um, going out again it's expanding again that row is getting bigger so we need to pick up two seed beads to start with to make this row longer which I'll show you in a second and then after the two we're going to pick up a black and then we'll continue the rest of the row and as you can see this is not increasing at all down the bottom here so we'll finish that one off really easily right to begin the next row I'm picking up two seed beads and we're going to still just as before take it into that bridging thread like that and because we picked up the two beads it's going to push the second bead up higher 
because obviously it's still sitting in the same place that you would have done if there was one bead if that makes sense and then we're going to take the needle as before back up into the bead that's sort of facing in nearest to all the beadwork and pull just like that and as you can see now we've got that increase going out there so I'm going to pick up my black bead for the eye and now just because we're adding single bead we just carry on just like we did before so there's my eye going in like so and now all I need to do is finish the row with white beads right until we use that last bridging thread so I'm going to go and do that and I'll come back and we'll do the next row together right there we go there's the third row of beading added and because we're not increasing there we just pick up one bead there and add it on to that bridging step there's no need to add anything onto the end there so the next row up we're going to be popping the mouth in and we are increasing both ends of the row so we're going to pick up i think it's six yeah so six white seed beads before i add the mouth and then another four white seed beads up the top so i'll just get that started with you and then I'll go ahead and finish it off. Right, because we're increasing the row, I've picked up two seed beads to begin with. I'm going to take the needle into that bridging thread, like that, and pull. And then, just like before, we're going to take the needle up into that seed bead here, like so. Sorry, I'm trying to look through the camera as I do it. Um, it's not always easy to see where I'm going with my needle. So I'm going to then carry on as normal by picking up one bead at a time. So this is just like we've obviously done now one on the other previous rows. Like that. And I'm just going to carry on now adding three more white and then one black and then finish off the rest with white. So I'll go away and I'll do that and I'll come back just before I finish the last row, end of the row here. Right, as you can see, I've reached the end of that row and I've used the final bridging thread. So just to increase that row there, we're going to take the needle, just like before, up under that thread that's going up into that bead and just add it on the end that way. And then take the needle back up through the bead. So we're exiting out at the top and pull. And there you go. That bead now is added on the top. Right, we finished that row now, and I should have said that there's actually 11 beads in this row in total, so one black bead and 10 white beads, and then every other row are 10 beads long, um, and this row here obviously has the white beads, so it's nine, uh, has the black beads, sorry, so it has nine white beads and one black bead. So we're going to move on to the next row, and this one is uh, 10 beads long again, one of them's the eye. So we're going to pick up one bead to begin with because, let me show you, you can see we're going back down again from that top, so sort of like the arrow point. So we're going in there and in there, we're not increasing at all. So we're just going to go ahead and add those. So because we're not increasing, we just need to pick up one bead to start the row. So we just start and put that in just like normal. So under that bridging thread, up back into the bead, and there you can see that's been added. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my second white bead, like that. And now we need to add the eye in.
like that. And I have to say, these are two different brands of seed beads. Um, one is Toho, the white is Toho, and they're reasonably uniform in size. I think the other ones are Preciosa, I think. Um, and they're slightly different sizes. So I have picked out three beads that all look roughly the same size. So that's just something to watch for um, with your different brands of seed beads. Just try to make them as consistent as possible for the brick stitch. If you're, if you're using seed beads, if you're using Delicas, then they should all be the fine. Um, I just don't have any Delicas. So I'm using what I have. So I've done that. I'm going to finish off the white until I'm down at that bridging thread there. Um, and I shall come back and show you the next row. Right, there we go, that row's finished and we're exiting out the bottom again. Um, we're on the final two rows now, so the black beads have all been used and we're just on these two. So as you can see, we're exiting out the bottom and this row is increasing. So we're going to pick up two beads to start with, but up here it's not increasing. So we just pick up the one to finish. So we just use the bridging thread up there and pick two up to start with there. And this is ten beads in total, so I shall go ahead. Pick up my two to start the row, like that. Take it into that bridging thread, like so. Pull up. They don't sit right, just wiggle until they do. And then we can take the needle up and into that bead, the one on the inside of the beadwork. There we go, we've uh, made that longer now. And I'm just going to carry on now with the white beads right up until I finished these bridging threads here. So I shall see you when I've done that. There we go, that row is completely finished now. We're on to the final row, which is this outer row here. 10 beads in total. We are not increasing on this end, but we are increasing at the bottom here. But because we're exiting out the top, we're just gonna pick up the one seed bead to begin with. So I shall go ahead and do that. My uh, thread's getting quite short now, so I'll try and move my beads in nearer. So there we go, I've got one bead and we're just going to go into that bridging thread here like so and then back up and into the bead and that's the start of the new row. So I think I'm going to go off and add all these beads and I'll come back when I've reached the end of the row um, because I think you'll probably have figured out by now exactly how I'm doing this. There we go, I've finished the row and I've used all those bridging threads but we just need to add the one more bead. So, let's just pick the bead up and then we're going to take it across those threads, if you can see that, and in, just like we did before, and then up into the bead. And that pretty much is our little ghost finished. So I'm just going to take the needle off the end of this thread, and that's mainly because I like to do all the knots and tying off at the end um, at the same time, just so I don't sort of try to do more beadwork up here and run into knots down here. So if you want to go ahead and do your knots now, you can just keep this thread in the lower half and then you've got the upper half to use the other tail thread because there's not a lot of beadwork to do your knotting in. So I'm just going to put my needle onto this really long tail thread that we left at the beginning. There we go. So I've got my needle on my tail thread and we obviously need to add the loop up here for the earring um, wire. And we need to sort out this little white bead here that keeps wanting to tip itself off. So I'm going to take my needle up into the white bead on the end here. 
like so. And then we're going to take the thread and hopefully so you can see this. Right, it's going to be super hard to see. But there's a bridging thread that goes between this bead and this bead down here. So these two beads on this second row. And there's a little bridging thread that goes between them. Can you see it? There. I've put my needle underneath that thread. So it's going to hold the thread in place. It'll all become clear in a second. Anyway, so take your needle through there and then back into the white on C bead on the end here. Oops. There you go. So take that back into the white. And now, because we've looped the thread, it'll hold it in place. So pull. And then we're going to move up to the top here. Now I'm going to take the needle straight into this outer bead on the second row on the top here. Um, it might start to get a little bit tight, but it should be okay. You're going to see the thread around the outside of that bead, but that's fine. That's what happens every time we decrease a row. Um, you see a thread. It's just I've got white beads and white thread, so it's really hard to see. So we're just going to take the needle into there. That's my other thread. And then we're going to take the needle into these top two beads here. So just keep on working your way up. Like that. Now I've got five of my little clear beads off to the side here. If I can find them all, they are that clear and that tiny. So that's what I've got there for my loop. There's just five of them. And I'm exiting out this white, come on, focus, seed bead at the top here. So I'm going to take the needle in at the top again, but sort of at the other side. So it's going to form a loop with those beads when I pull that thread through. There we go, like that. Now, I always like to reinforce this, so I'm going to go up through all of these seed beads again. So not difficult, just literally take your needle through all of them. I think what's harder is trying to get this camera to focus. Like so. And once you've gone through those a second time, you just go back through the white at the top and then pull it. So this beadwork should all pull together and sit nicely to form a loop like that. There we go. And now we're going to take the needle into the next, it's gone through quite easily through the two. So we're going to go through all these top seed beads here. There we go. You can see it just helps get this to sit nicely straight into the end seed bead on the very opposite side because obviously we started up here. We're now finishing down here. like so and now we're ready to knot the threads and cut them off and that's it there's our ghost so to knot the threads I'm going to take the needle back into the beadwork down here and the more times you can do this technique of knotting the stronger your beadwork will be so I've got my thread here. It's going to be one of those that's tricky to show you because it's white on white. But we're going to take the needle and we're going to pass it across the threads that are going up between the beads. Can you see that there? So just take that up and under and pull. And when you've got a loop like that, you take your needle back in, pull through and then pull and that has formed a knot in your beadwork and now you just go up and into another bead and that knot will disappear never to be seen again like that and then you just carry on you do that all through the beadwork and you do exactly the same for the tail thread so you take it back into the beadwork down here and weave your way through do it a good three or four times on each thread 
and then you can cut them off. So I'm going to go knot this off and then I'll come back and show you the final steps. Alright, there's my ghost all finished. I'm just going to cut these tail threads off. Um, and I do that, I press against the surface that I'm beading on um, and then I pull the thread and the idea is that it'll ping when it snips it'll ping into that beadwork like that so I'm, I'm really pulling and snipping like that there we go, completely finished we just need our earring wire and our pliers so I'm just going to open that up like that and pop the little ghosty on obviously you could make this into a necklace if you wanted and just put a jump ring on it and pop it on a chain twist it shut and there's a little ghosty earring so you can go off and make your second earring and you're ready for Halloween uh, I should put some links below for the pumpkin tutorial that I did and for the blog post um, which will have a PDF for you to download of the actual pattern if you want to have it to keep as a reserve. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching. Bye!